Take a look at this remarkable reaction. Treatment of an alkyl benzene, you see this alkyl group has four carbons on it, with chromic acid and heat, results in complete destruction of the alkyl group replacement with the carboxylic acid attached directly to the aromatic ring. This falls into a, this falls into a category of reactions, like the benzylic bromination using NVS, that are specific to reaction at the benzylic position. The carbon attached to the aromatic ring can have another alkyl group attached to it, like this methyl. So we could write a structure like this as a general structure for this reaction. And when you look at the next result, treatment of tertiary butyl benzene with this chromic acid and heat, and see that there's no reaction, it becomes clear that the benzylic hydrogen is required for this reaction. We can have none, one or two alkyl groups attached to that carbon, but not three. This benzylic hydrogen is essential for the reaction to occur. And by the way, although I'm using chromic acid written like this, a typical formula for creating this chromic acid is dichromate with sulfuric acid and water. Chromium-6 is not the only oxidizing agent that will work in this. Permanganate works also. And using permanganate, we have to follow the reaction with acid to protonate the carboxylate group that's formed. So using either permanganate or sodium dichromate with sulfuric acid, we have a very strong metal-based oxidizing agent that selectively oxidizes the benzylic position because there's a benzylic hydrogen here. Now while the mechanism of this reaction is complicated and not fully understood, it seems clear that the first step involves a metal oxidizing at the benzylic position to remove a hydrogen. This formation of the especially stable benzylic radical is reminiscent of what we saw for benzylic bromination, and multiple oxidative steps beyond this then will result in the benzoic acid. You'll recall that we rationalized the special stability of the benzylic radical by noticing that the p orbital on the benzylic carbon can overlap with the p orbitals of the aromatic ring. This overlap provides special stability because it provides special delocalization of that radical electron. In any case, this reaction is very useful synthetically. Take a look at a few examples. You can start with a compound like isopropyl benzene, make benzoic acid. You can start with a xylene that has a couple of methyl groups attached, end up with a dibenzoic acid. If you have two alkyl groups and one of them is tertiary, like tertiary butyl, selectively you'll oxidize the methyl group and leave the tertiary butyl group there, forming a product that is an alkyl benzoic acid. And then finally, you can have other substituents attached too, which will be unaffected by the oxidation conditions. I've shown here a nitroxylene being oxidized to make a dibenzoic acid that has the nitro group attached. These are just a few examples to give you a sense that a variety of monoalkyl benzenes all will make the carboxylic acid. Dialkyl groups will be oxidized, tertiary alkyl groups will not, and you can have other substituents as well. This can be a very useful way to make benzoic acids. Put it down on your list of tools for organic synthesis.